After nearly two decades as a San Diego Chargers team physician, Dr. David Chow is segueing into a new career, social media medicine. Not to be confused, of course, with socialized medicine. Dr. Chow is quickly building a following both on Twitter and with his blog on nationalfootballpost.com. For those of you who don't follow him on Twitter, go to profootballdoc or check out his Monday blog, Monday, mor uh, Monday, Monday Morning MD, uh, nationalfootballpost.com. Those are two must-follows for anybody who's playing fantasy football or wants to place a bet with more injury information than your teams are giving you. Dr. David Chow is making his first ever appearance here at KUSI TV. And man, we are grateful for that. Dr. Chow, welcome to KUSI. Can you tell us how you've become the new must-follow, <laughs> new must-read for any football fanatic? Thanks for having me, Paul. And, you know, I think anytime you're passionate what you do, just like you are, Paul, I think hopefully you get to be good at it. And I've been passionate about orthopedics and sports medicine for years. With my time in the Chargers, I always maintain my private practice. And right now, I'm still pra pra practicing medicine still. But this is the new hobby, to look at injuries, give a behind-the-scenes look at what happens with football players, et cetera. A new hobby that is growing by leaps and bounds. You have at least two decades worth of contacts in and around the NFL, which means you have a wealth of inside information. Are you no longer encumbered by the doctor-patient confidentiality clause, or are you? I don't think it's an encumbrance. I think it's, uh, for a physician, you really always have to protect patients, and I always do. And what I'm doing with this is I'm not trading on insider sources. I'm not trading on insider information. What I'm trying to provide the public is some insider knowledge. In other words, my experience over time and how things might work. So I'm doing insider knowledge, not insider information. So I'm dealing with things that are in the public domain. So I think I'm pretty safe in, in treating patients fairly. And of course, I would never comment on someone that I was actually doing surgery on or seeing, which I still do regularly in my practice. For anybody who reads you or follows you on Twitter, man, you have an uncanny ability to diagnose injuries from a distance. You're like Dr. Bombay. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, you're spot on, uh, more so than you, you give more reliable information, certainly than the organizations do. I'm interested in the super secret world of the NFL. How is your new role being received? Well, you know, I, my own statistics have been 65 and 8 in, in, in calling injuries in live real time. But it's really not by accident. It's what I studied for two decades, as you said. Anytime I saw a patient who was injured on the field, a player, I examined them, I followed them. And on Monday morning, we re-examine them, get MRIs, x-rays. And then I'd go upstairs Monday afternoon, Monday late morning, and look at the video of their injury. And we'd really study the mechanisms of severity. And so it's sort of this wealth of information over two decades that I'm sort of translating. And so far, no one's been upset. The bottom line is it's a, it's a fishbowl world out there for medicine now and anything in the NFL. And uh, I guess you'd rather have a medical person commenting on medical things than media people. And the media people are out there, and they're going to do it either way. So the big news in the NFL is the NFL uh, concussion settlement last week, where the owners have basically agreed to uh, remove the cap on how much they're going to have to pay out. Uh, I think the cap was set at 65, 675 million. Now they're remo going to remove that cap. Your reaction to all that? Well, you know, to me, uh, if it's a settlement and both sides are agreeing, agreeing to it, then I'm certainly happy for them. Right now it's a proposed settlement and the judge has, has passed it. I'm not a judge and attorney. I don't know what the value is in, in all of this, but as an attorney friend told me, if both sides are a little bit unhappy, that's probably a good settlement. And if both sides are agreeing to move on, you know, uh, that's their business and I'm all for it. You know, we have a lot of viewers here who are into high school football parents. CIF is certainly restricting the amount of contact now during practice. Uh, it, it's, it's filtered down to both college and high school. You have kids. Would you uh, let them play tackle football? Well, I have one and a half year old twins and, and a boy and girl. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the first question, I guess, is would my wife let him play football? And the answer is no. But, and she's probably going to rule the roost. But at, at one and a half years old, there's so much we don't know about concussions. There's a lot that's going to develop over the next decade. I'm going to take a wait and see attitude in terms of it. But I will say that, you know, if my son likes swimming as much as he likes football, I'm going to encourage him to be a swimmer. But if he loves football, I'm open to consideration. It is a contact sport, but you can also get hurt playing basketball as a non-contact sport. So it's part of the risks that we lead. But hopefully there'll be more protection in the future with helmets or whatever new uh, discoveries happen. Let's talk, you know, you, you do a lot of work with, uh, with the youngsters as well. Talk about Taste at the Cove uh, this coming September 4th. Uh, tell us about this event. 
Thanks for bringing it up. It's, I'm very proud of this. It's our 13th year. It's for San Diego Sports Medicine Foundation. And we do free, we raise money to do free surgery, surgeries on kids who don't have insurance. We run a Saturday morning free clinic. Reggie Bush was one of our patients way back when. We're pleased to honor Coach Steve Fisher. Some of the past honorees have been Tony Hawk, Trevor Hoffman, Marshall Falk, Rodney Harrison, and this year it's Steve Fisher along with Sherry Brasher from Fresh Start. We're very proud of that. It's a great fundraising event. Uh, go to tasteatthecove.com. Love to have everybody come. It's a guaranteed good time. All right, you know, we're, we're talking about head trauma. Is World Cup soccer getting off the hook a little bit? You know, we're always talking about football. There seems to be a lot of uh, trauma in soccer as well. No question. This, uh, the highlight you're showing, obviously, is from the, uh, the finals, and there's been uh, uh, several uh, different concussions. I actually wrote an article about it two weeks ago from Monday Morning MD, where the NFL is actually ahead of FIFA and the Olympics in concussion policies. The NFL has strict concussion policies of who needs to be examined and when they should be removed, and any concussion is removed. And uh, in FIFA and in the Olympics, it's up to the team physician. There's really no regulation. So if someone wants to come back in, FIFA doesn't really control it. And so uh, the NFL, as much criticism has got as, as it's gotten, and I'm not trying to defend the league, they're actually ahead of the world culture on this. All right, let's quickly, we got uh, time running out here. I want to get through these last two items. Kobe Bryant, should we be more worried about his Achilles or his knee as far as him ever being Kobe Bryant again? I think you can say both or neither. I'd be more worried about cumulative injuries in his age. And the two injuries actually did have to do with each other. The Achilles injury led to the hyperextension of the knee injury. All right. And then lastly, you were, uh, you've been associated with the X Games for a long time. You're the, the X Games physician. I believe you were a first responder for that uh, Caleb Moore uh, fatal crash. Is the quest to be the the uh, you know the do the next hot trick is it getting out of hand as far as the X Games is concerned? Well, this is their passion and this is their life. I was one of the first responders. There's a great team of athletic trainers that were on site as well as ski patrol. And as you can see, he was awake, alert, and uh, and vital signs stable when he walked off. But uh, certainly when we sec checked him secondarily, we decided he had to go to the hospital. He was fine when he got there, but unfortunately uh, overnight and the next day he started to, to uh, deteriorate. They certainly pushed the envelope. But, you know, at least in the, the X Games, as I tell football players, the ramp doesn't move, and a good trick you're supposed to ride away from. In football, the object of every play is that there's some sort of contact. Right, right. Well, Dr. Chow, we really appreciate you uh, coming in. I, man, I hope this is the first of many visits. And there's a long line of KUSI patients. Rick Willis has a rash he wants you to look at. So uh, <laughs> uh, b before you go... Uh, I'll we'll, get Dr. Uh, on or Dr. Wong. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. David Chow, <laughs> who will now become our KUSI team physician. Wow. We're, we're bringing him on. What an interesting uh, career. Yeah. Yes. To be dealing with all those and I mean, and, and to immerse himself now in the social media world. And boy, I'll tell you what, everybody who's into the NFL is following him very closely because he'll tell you the, he can tell you an injury more accurately yeah. than the yeah. team will let on. So, right. Care to elaborate on that rash that Rick's got? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll let it go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Time to check in with Mark and uh, more on the weather and the clouds.